and it's talking about the dramatic increase of children unaccompanied at the border attempting to enter this country illegally. Roll it. Is it really your testimony that granting amnesty to some 800,000 people who came illegally as children had no effect in causing a dramatic increase in children being handed over to international cartels to be smuggled in here illegally? I believe, Senator, that the primary motivator for the reason for this spike in migration, and I'm not a sociologist, I'm not an expert, is the situations that Senator Durbin and others have laid out in these countries. Yeah, is but Mr. Terrible. Secretary, my time is expiring, but with all respect, in my view, that argument is a red herring. That, that argument explains why we've seen an increase in Central American immigration, to be sure because of the problems and challenges those nations are facing. But it doesn't explain the unaccompanied minors. In 2011, 15% of the OTMs of the other than Mexicans apprehended were un unaccompanied minors. In 2014, that number's grown to 37%. There's nothing about the violence in Central America that would cause people to be handing over their children, little girls and little boys, separately. It, it will cause more people from Central America to come here, but not the kids. And I basically called out DHS uh, Secretary Johnson for the reason of bunny stew. And here it is. Johnson, I, I didn't play for you the whole exchange, but we have a limited amount of time. We always want to make sure we maximize it. But what he said was, we can't deport 11.5 million. That was one of the lines. He was talking about the fact that what the deferred action for childhood arrivals 800,000, mind you, that President Obama did through executive order, executive action, because he couldn't get it passed through Congress, is only for a set number of people with a particular date. And so it would only apply to people coming before a particular date. So you can't blame the administration for what's happening now, which doesn't really address the fact that the phone calls to the parents from their other family members and friends saying, hey, they're going to let us stay because they keep their, he did it in 2012 with executive action, and there's a thought that he's going to do it before the next election. And it encourages others, much like the 86 amnesty encouraged more People thinking politically we can shape it. Our enemies certainly understood this and understand it when it comes to fighting wars. Get the left on their side, boom, make it unpopular, and they can manipulate our system. But I digress. I go to Senator Ted Cruz, who I just got to tell you, I'm loving some of the stuff he has to say. I just dig it. It's not about a Republican. It's not about Democrat. I just like the fact that he is able to articulate and communicate in the way he does so well. Because he calls out DHS Secretary Johnson for the president basically encouraging parents to throw their kids into situations of sex, sex slavery or potential violent harm being sold to cartels. And he's saying, stop this. And if he's thinking of doing it again, please, please tell him not to. Roll it. It has been widely reported that President Obama, that the administration is contemplating yet another amnesty like DACA, like two years ago, just a couple of months before the upcoming election. And I will say to you, and I will urge you to pass on to the president, that I think that would be a grave mistake. I think it would be contrary to rule of law. And I think granting yet another amnesty would result in those numbers going even higher, would result in even more little girls and little boys being subjected to violence and horrific, dangerous conditions. And it would be a serious mistake for us to go down that road. They're being dropped off, by the way, in Arizona. They're being held reportedly in at military bases. There are reports of disease. I, this is outrageous. 
It was addressed by Michael Eric Dyson, race hustler, a man who, I mean, this man could pop out the words. He is a very quick communicator in the sense of the amount of words and the words I have to look up. I just go, wow. Seems like a nice enough guy, quite frankly. He's just, well, you'll hear it. He was guest hosting for The Ed Show, and he, and he took a letter on The Ed Show. The Ed Show is on MSNBC. Many of you don't know that because of the ratings, obviously, or what it, the content is. Anyway, he's addressing the border situation, children on the border, and what to do about it. He received a letter. Roll it. Here's our next question. It's from Maryland. Why are the Republicans so thrilled at hurting immigrants and not giving them a chance at citizenship? Boy, I tell you, Marilyn, I don't want to demonize my opponents. I don't like to think of other people who disbelieve what I believe uh, to be somehow horrible human beings. But I got to tell you, I can find no good reason that people would look at those 50 children uh, really being warehoused in such vicious and horrible fashion and think anything else but that we have got to help them. Well, we're talking more about maybe in the greater sense, just to let you know, we're talking about thousands of p children, possibly up to 145,000 this year, or 2015, 90,000 this year. And that's up from 7,000 in 2011. No, no, no. The amnesty had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. And I know you don't want to go after people you disagree with and basically conjecture the fact that they must be evil and they have horns and they just hate children. That's probably what you think. But y you do have an IQ above room temperature, so I'm sure you don't believe that, Mr. Dyson, uh, Dr. Dyson, whatever it may be. I think you recognize that we're dealing with the manipulation of a system, and now you say these children are on the border, but you're not going to the cause, and I want to deal with the cause. I like that. But nonetheless, he went on, and here he goes after, well, as a Christian, he goes after our faith. Roll it. You know, we spew a lot of religious discourse. We're going to talk a little bit about it in the show later on today. All of this Christian rhetoric about we are sanctified and saved and believe in the righteousness of God, and yet we allow people to suffer in depraved fashion. My former mentor, the late Reverend Dr. James Washington said, some people go to church to love God instead of their neighbor. I feel about some of the Republicans that they would rather love God instead of the neighbors that they see before them because it demands something serious of them, a commitment to those who are the least of these. So I don't know why the Republicans do that, but if they want to redeem their reputations as human beings, I say they join the rest of us and get concerned about the least of these who are immigrants who deserve a path to citizenship in America. How about this? How, how about we'll get a little more than concern and we'll just merely enforce the law? You're an adult. you got to know about a limited amount of resources, a finite amount of resources that we have to deal with a particular situation. You also know about the foundation of undermining the rule of law, and once you do that, anything goes. And you no longer, in our constitutional republic, we will no longer be able to hold it together because we will become, in essence, whatever the people in power say is okay, no law, banana republic. So you understand these concepts, and if you do, shame on you for a casting aspersions on those of faith who merely want the rule of law upheld. Now, here's the deal. Check this one out. You're going to want to listen right now. You got it? You ready? Focus. This is what it's all about. There's a bridge, and there's a hole in the bridge. People are falling through that hole, and they're falling down. They're hitting the ground, and they're getting hurt, or they die. Now, Dyson would be looking at the people falling through and crashing and bloody and say, oh, let's dedicate 110% of our resources just to the health care of those people. I want to fix the bridge. I want to fix the bridge. I want to help the people that I can, but I want to fix the bridge. The way I help the people that we can, we enforce our law and we deport them and we get them back on a plane to mommy and daddy. And if their dad, mom and dad ever does come to the United States, looking for that, and they've sent their kid up here, you know what we do? We prosecute them because you don't send your kids up here because you're not going to get into the country. It'll permanently disqualify you if you send your kid to try to get in here illegally. You send that signal. Now, DHS Secretary Johnson now is doing a tour of d down 
in Central America. Maybe expressing that, but I doubt that. Because we have an administration that won't reach out and pick up the phone or make a speech about a naturalized citizen's wife and the children in the Sudan who have been accused of apostasy. By the way, she has been a Christian all her life. We have a prisoner in Mexico that is a Marine. Hey, guess what? I bet, yeah, his parents, his mother has been on our network, right? Yeah, children, speaking of Bergdahl. And we give a lot of aid to Mexico. We could do this in a heartbeat and save people. The administration's not doing it, and that's disgusting. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth coming up, Colonel Kukulu, AFR Talk.